Hello everyone and welcome. Today I'm going to be talking about Ring World by Larry Niven. <clears throat> now, um, this is actually the second book that I've uh, read and reviewed, or actually even just read. Um, the first one was a book that I talked about a while back called The Draco Tavern, a short story compilation of uh, fantastic short story compilation <clears throat> about uh, this dude named Rick, Sherm Rick Schumann who <clears throat> like right when uh, shortly after first contact is made with extraterrestrial life he opens up a bar made specifically for various kinds of extraterrestrial life and um, <clears throat> the, whole, and the whole thing is you know this compilation of various stories of his experiences and so on and so forth. It's fantastic. Check it out. Anyway, um, <clears throat> this is the more well-known book that he has written <clears throat> to the point where like even like uh, the Siffy channel has been um, in works of making a written world movie eventually. They, they're, st they're still in talks, so I doubt it'll be made anytime soon, if ever, but it just goes to show you like how famous how big this how well known this book is though it's still not still still tragically not well known enough for them to actually go through with making a movie but still you know yeah <clears throat> and um yeah, it's about the following casts of uh characters um you, Louis Wu, the main character, human and old, bored with having to li having lived too fully for far too many years, two hundred to be exact. It's on its, it starts on his two hundredth birthday, seeking a challenge, and all too capable of handling it. N Nessus, a trembling coward, puppet a puppeteer with a built-in survival pattern of non-violence, except that this particular puppeteer is insane. They're, the puppeteers are this ancient race, you see. Tila Brown, a human wide-eyed youngster with no allegiances, no experience, no abilities, and all the luck in the world, and that actually is true. Well, the first three, like, no experience or abilities, not necessarily, but the luck is actually plays into this story. And lastly, speaker to animals. <clears throat> Xin, a large orange-furred and carnivorous and one of the most savage life forms in the galaxy. And why do these des disparate individuals come together? How could they possibly function together? And where in the name <clears throat> of anything is sane are they headed? Okay, so... No, no, the story is uh, that this Louis Wu is, like, in the beginning of the book, he's celebrating his 200th birthday. And he's encountered by Nessus, who wants to uh, take him on an adventure, I guess you could say. And they go to, and um, they run into the following other characters. They go to the ring world. Why? Well, uh, they'll explain later on, but it has to do with this, like, big thing at the center of the galaxy, this get massive gamma thing, and they think that surviving on the ring world would be able to help them survive this. Also, um, they want to actually talk to the people who built this ring world. And when they get there, they see that society's, that the whole civilization is collapsed. And they want to and uh, as, uh, and they want to figure out like how this happened, you know, and um, <clears throat> yeah, and that's how the and they they throughout this journey on the Ring World they go out and they explore, you know, like because uh, their ship is crashed because of the Ring World's automatic defenses, and now they need to you know find a way off the Ring World and. They journey around, encounter all sorts of locations and people and so on and so forth. And, um, and, uh, yeah, and 
like one thing that I thought was just really mind blowing is like like they really put the emphasis on the size. They they never stopped talking about it. And um even despite the vast distance that they travel and all the things they see and all the people they meet, they still saw almost nothing of the ring world itself. It's just like this tiny little bit that they actually saw. This this whole book, all these adventures and people and places and they saw, like, almost nothing, you know. And, like, that was just made it all ama just amazing to me. Like, I wonder what else has... What else have these guys... Uh, like, what else has this place have in the store? And there are plenty of prequels and sequels, so... From what I've heard, read, so... <clears throat> there should be plenty more interesting possibilities for plenty more adventures and uh yeah um but there's like some things that um despite like all the stuff that i thought was really great there's still some things that kind of bugged me like um <clears throat> okay like uh, let's take a look at this at this quote in the back i myself dr have dreamed up an intermediate step between dyson spheres and planets Build a ring 93 million miles in radius, one Earth orbit, which would make it 600 million miles long. If we have the mass of Jupiter to work with, and if we make a mi it a million miles wide, we get a thickness of about a thousand meters. The ring world would thus be much sturdier than a Dyson sphere. There are other advantages. We can spin it for gravity, a rotation on its axis, 700, 170 miles per second would give the ring world one gravity outward. We would even have, we wouldn't even have to have a roof. It would, the walls would be a thousand miles height at each rim. <clears throat> Aim it at the sun. Very little air will leak out over the edges. Well, actually, no, because yeah, I think our atmosphere isn't even a thousand miles thick. But is it? Yeah, the thing is roomy enough. Three million times the area of the Earth. It'll be some time before anything anyone complains about overcrowding. <clears throat> and um, and while some of the things that I suggest are um, like are that I problems with this are um, actually brought up, like how would night time happen? And they have uh, like we see on the the uh, cover, like there's these floating black squares and even in the book they're brought up there's these giant shadow square things that will occasionally provide nighttime and I mean will provide a regular nighttime and uh, they also help in like providing power for the for the various civilizations and defenses and whatnot and um, and another problem that the fans of that many fans of this series has brought up is like uh that it's not really orbiting and that it's really just sort of um it's like unstable thing that could easily crash into the sun and they Larry Niven like brought up like in like I think a prequel or something they 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 put a like jets or thrusters that would keep it in perpetual orbit and stuff. And there's like some stuff that I kinda kind of bugs me a little bit is, uh, is, uh, like, some sort of some small stuff, like, in this, uh, description, because, uh, where, um, you know, like, uh, it goes back and forth between, uh, metric and non-metric, you know, it's like, 300 million miles in, or a million miles long, and it'll be like, a and it'll be like, have the thickness of a thousand meters or something, but, like, I don't know, just kind of, but, but, and there's, like, one other thing, um, that's actually in the book, that it says here it would have a thickness of about a thousand meters, but I think it's, like, in the, in the story, it only, it's only, like, uh, I think it was only 50 meters thick, like, 40 meters of earth, and, like, 10, 
I mean, I mean, 40 feet of, uh, of, uh, dirt and stuff, and, like, 10 feet of, uh, metal, and, uh, like, they couldn't have any, like, like, uh, and I was just wondering, like, what exactly is this, uh, ring world made out of if there are, port there's, like, 10 meters thick, I mean, some of these, like, times there are, like, trying to hold up, like, mountains that are, like, a thousand miles high and stuff, <clears throat> and, um, like, unclimbable mountains, and the mountain, and the ring world is, like, really this thin, and, uh, yeah, um, but overall, you know, like, I still found it enjoyable, it's just still a lot of fun. I give it my personal rating of 4 out of 5. Yes, um, there's like some, uh, it's not really quite as well-aged, you know, as other sci-fi novels. But overall, it's still a comfortable recommendation. It's still a decent enough read, amusing, you know, like all of the different stuff they encounter and their emphasis on, like, how little they saw and how much there still is. It's still, it's just a great book. <clears throat> Check it out. You'll love it. I, maybe. Yeah. Anyway. Next time, <clears throat> we're going to be taking a look at the zombie books of Max L. Brooks. Until then, see you later. Have a nice day. Please support your local bookstores and libraries, and once again, have a nice day.